Something you can do is calculate an ideal sample size to use. So kind of tell us how many people should we survey. If we have some information already and we know the level of confidence we want to use and we have an idea of margin of error that we want to use. If we have all that information, we could say, okay, let's survey this many people to get that kind of accuracy coming through. So our formula is over here. It's going to be n equals and you take this sample proportion and one minus that sample proportion that you expect for the values. If they don't give you values for your proportions, what you can assume is 50%. We can just say, let's assume that the proportions are the same and move forward from there. But if they give you proportions, you want to use those values. Z star is going to come from your confidence level. So that's going to be your critical Z score. And then ME stands for margin of error. The idea being that researchers, if they have an idea of the level of confidence they want to have and all of these values, they could say, we want to collect data such that we have 2% margin of error or 5% margin of error. They can have an idea of the error they want to allow and with that, calculate the sample size they need to achieve that level of error. So once we calculate, we'll talk about this little rule here. When we do this calculation, you always round up the value for n. As soon as you have a little decimal afterwards, you always round it up. So let's look at this example here. It's believed that 25% of adults over 50 never graduated high school, and we wish to see if the same is true among 25 to 30 year olds. So if we're assuming it's true, then we're going to assume if we take a sample proportion, it would be 0.25, which means Q hat would be 0.75. So that's the information we get out of that sentence. So how many of this younger age group so these questions are going to be in terms of how many people should we talk to? How many things should we survey? So this wants to know what is n? What's our sample size? So how many people must we survey in order to estimate the proportion of non-grads to within 6%? So that wording there of within 6%, that's describing our margin of error. And if it's given in a percentage, be sure to change it into a decimal. Margin of error should be worked with as a decimal, but is often described as a percentage when working with proportions. And then they tell us Z star. So if we have 90% confidence from those Z star values that we found earlier, that's going to be a 1.6449. So using our formula, calculating N, we take our sample proportion times 1 minus that sample proportion times, and then you're going to take Z star, so the 1.6449, divided by our margin of error, and you want to square that division. Um, with this, plug in everything at once into a calculator. If anything is a little bit rounded, it can really throw off the values for your sample size. So try to stay as accurate as possible with these. So. An exact value that will come from the calculator for this is 140.92, which that decimal already suggests for us to round up, but even if that was a 0 0.02, we'd still round up. So from there, always round up, which we would have done anyway, but just to be sure we always follow that rule, we'd want a larger sample size. So we should survey 141 of this younger age group. All right, let's look at this next example, which is pretty much the same. All we're going to do is change margin of error. So now we're going to have margin of error of 0.04. So with our formula, we'll have 0.25 times 0.75 times that 1.6449 over 0.04 now squared. 
if we put that into the calculator, that's going to be 317.07. Now this is a good example of where typically, following mathematical rounding rules, we would round down. However, with sample size, always round up. The idea being that the researchers want 4% error. So there's this level of error that they want. Typically, you don't want to introduce more error for the researchers. If, you, if they said, we want 4% error, and then you give them data and you're like, oh, by the way, that actually has 5% error, they're probably not going to be too happy about that. <laughs> if they chose that 4% for a reason, they don't want to actually have more error involved with their data. And with that, error comes through in sample size in terms of smaller sample sizes. When you take smaller sample sizes, there's more error involved. So if we compare taking a sample of 20 people to a sample of 200 people, any values that I collect from that sample of 20 people is going to have a lot of error involved. Whereas if I have a sample of 200 people, I can trust those values more. Then if I compare that to a sample of 2,000 people, I can trust those values even more. So the larger the sample size, the more accuracy we have. As we take larger sample size, that error goes down. So if I rounded down here, if I took this 317 and rounded it down, I've introduced more error. To have 4% margin of error, I would need to talk to 317.07 people, but we can't talk to a decimal of a person. And if we follow the rounding rule, we've actually introduced a teeny bit more error. So instead, what we want to do is round it up. We want to take that and round it up to 318. So then when they collect this survey, they'll actually have less than 4% error. And they'd probably be happy with that. If they chose something with 4% error and you said, here's the data, but by the way, there's 3% error, they'd probably be happy about that because now there's more accuracy. So for this, we should survey uh, 318 of this younger age group. And the punchline to this rounding rule is that larger sample sizes have less error. So this is the formula you want to use for calculating sample size.